During all of this, it's clear that Mulder has been hoping to get into the good doctor's pants, even blowing off Scully when she calls so that he could talk to her about his fascination with insects, which is a bald-faced lie. That night, when he tries and fails to sleep, we can see that he's upset about all the stuff related to bugs. And he finally calls up Scully, who's been sleeping with the phone in her hand just in case he called. And she's visibly unhappy to find out this entomologist is a woman named Bambi. Mulder confesses that he actually despises insects. They're repulsive things with no business sharing the planet with him. So that counts as a pretty big lie, but then I don't think he had any long-term plans for him and Dr. Bambi. Well, more excitement. Now a man in the motel is dead, again covered in roaches. But at this point, even Mulder thinks that this isn't something abnormal. It's probably panic over the roaches leading to this guy just dying from a heart attack. You know, when they crawled over him. That would do it to you if you had been hearing reports that cockroaches are killers. Mulder catches a break, though, when one of the roaches gets stuck in a trap. So Dr. Bambi looks it over. And, well, it doesn't make any sense what she finds, though. The genitalia resembles a microprocessor more than a roach's, you know, meat and two veg. But there is someone who might know something about that, an expert in robotics who has published studies on making robots that model insects. So Mulder goes to meet him. Dr. Ivanov? Why are you scaring my robots? Is this town's main export supervillains? His work with making robots like insects is his solution to the AI problem. Rather than emulating an advanced human brain, he's emulating a simple insect one, and mimicking the body as well because why disrupt your theme? He's doing this work for NASA with the hope of sending his robots to other planets so he can terrify whole new species with his mad science. He has the problem basically licked already, except for one, energy. He needs a way to restore power or they'll eventually run down. At Mulder's prompting, he agrees that if aliens came to investigate us, they would do the same thing. Send robots rather than living beings to explore. Very advanced robots. That, of course, would mean that they would somehow have licked the problem of generating power from a local source, though. But he's awed and dumbfounded by the remnants of the roach that Mulder had caught. So much so that... That the makers decide to screw with us with a fake roach. Scully has taken it upon herself to come up, but stops at a convenience store, being swarmed with desperate people buying things as if they were at the edge of the apocalypse. And the sight of spilling malt balls sends them screaming out into the night. Well, despite this setback, she has a lead. The guy whose place was the site of the exterminator's death is the home of a researcher who is into alternate fuel sources based upon methane derived from animal dung. As established, cockroaches are coprophages, so it's possible that some hitched a ride that way. It also pairs up creepily with Dr. Robobug's issue about power. If power can be derived from feces, and roaches eat feces, then suddenly the idea of robot roaches is suddenly given more credence. Being able to efficiently extract it would give their robots an entirely new philosophy. Eat shit and live. They're going to check out his place, complete with the slogan, Waste is a terrible thing to waste. But the good doctor is panicky, although you might be too if there were bugs all over your poop. Dr. Eckerly takes a shot at Mulder, driven to near madness over the roach's first killing at his home, then following him to the motel to kill people. Now they're all over his la- Facility. Hard to call a storehouse for Menorah Lab, really. Mulder works to talk him down. Have I lost my mind? No. You've just had a very stressful day that's affected your ability to think clearly. Your judgment is a little clouded right now. It is? <laughs> then how do I know that you're not a cockroach? Okay, maybe you are losing your mind then. In his madness, he starts firing, which is bad news in a facility full of methane gas. Crap. 
Couldn't resist, could you? The sheriff says that although the panic is causing a ton of problems, there haven't been any actual roach-related issues since last night, so it sounds like it's over. Dr. Robobug arrives hoping for further analysis of the sample, and the conversation fascinates Dr. Bambi so much, they wind up heading off together, all thoughts of Mulder long gone. At home, Mulder writes about humans and their robotic creations, only to have a roach appear on his desk. And with all that he's learned, <laughs> War of the Coprophages is probably the most overshadowed of Darren Morgan's work on the X-Files, between the Emmy-winning Clyde Bruckman's Final Repose and Jose Chung's From Outer Space, and not being as bizarrely memorable as Humbug. Yet it is a smart and entertaining script, which plays with the fact that in the X-Files, Usually the highly unlikely is the solution, rather than the obvious evidence to the contrary. Here the fantastical is largely explained by the mundane, which I think is not only entertaining, but makes the suggested fantastical element of the show intriguing. Is this another example of coincidence, or is this a sign that there are indeed bugs among us from outer space? Morgan's script cleverly flips the table. What seems like a monster of the week about killers is more likely a monster of the week about passive observers. Duchovny and Gilliam are given some great material. Uh, the way that he gets up out of bed probing at his ear and his nose after talking about roaches is very well done. I also like the rare bit of jealousy that we see from Scully here at the thought of Mulder blowing her off for Dr. Bambi. Dr. Ivanov, the robotics guy, is another in a long line of interesting characters Morgan has brought to the show. Then again, you have to admire a man who writes a script where the destruction by the implied monsters is in fact caused merely by people reacting to misinformation. Monsters that inhabit bullshit inducing people to kill themselves because of the bullshit they keep spreading themselves. It's also, in a way, serves as a sort of pilot for what would wind up being in Jose Chung. That story would play with the mythology of the X-Files. This one seems to force Mulder to confront what he believes and why he believes it. First having Scully typically talk about the implausibility of it, but then having other scientists shattering his view one by one. And met not with defenses of his position, but consideration that his certainty is founded upon the highly improbable. Even his confrontation with Dr. Eckerly seems to suggest it. When Mulder says he's not crazy, just responding under stress, only to then leap to a conclusion that is patently ridiculous. Yet how easily all of that sounds like it could come from the mouth of someone telling Mulder his belief in aliens is flawed, and Mulder responding with insistence that the speaker must be part of the conspiracy. War of the Coprophages is, somewhat ironically, a breath of fresh air, because it doesn't present the same formula, but is brave and skilled enough to challenge it without disrespecting it. After all, the fact Russian hackers exist doesn't mean every time my computer malfunctions that the Russians are behind it. So, too, does not every crazy crime have to actually be a crime. It can just be a coincidence. The truth may be out there, but sometimes you overshadow it with your own lies. By the time there's another invasion of artificially intelligent, dung-eating robotic probes from outer space, maybe their uber children will have devised a way to save our planet. You know, I never thought I'd say this to you, Scully. But you smell bad. <laughs> <laughs>